Hello there, I'm Vieno and this is my 13th tutorial on D3 and like I said in the previous tutorial, in this uh, video I'll be showing you how to create a basic pie chart such as this one, or a donut chart I guess. Uh, so I prepared this um, from before but I've cleaned, uh, I've erased all the code but yeah this, this is what our chart is gonna look like if we succeed in creating it. So I'm just gonna refresh here and we have nothing. So let's uh, let's begin. I've set up a, a basic data array here consisting of three values and I have a variable containing uh, the radius for our uh, for our donuts and I have a, a canvas. So uh, let's begin by um, creating a group where we store our our visualization and transform it uh, translate 300 to 300 something like that all right uh, so there's two aspects to to this uh, um, donut chart the first one is the uh, um, arc path generator, which we looked at in the previous video, and the second one is a new feature of um, of D three. Well, it's not a new feature, but it's the first time I bring it up in this uh, series of tutorials, and that is the layout. Um, there are a number of different layouts uh, available to us in D three, and what they have in common, each layout takes a set of data and I guess um, recalculates it and returns something different. So for example in this video we'll be using the pi layout and what the pi layout does is it takes all our data and um, for each data element it gives it returns an object with a with a start angle and an end angle and also a, a value property which contains the actual value. So we'll look at that in a second uh, but first let's set up our our arc path generator so t3.svg.arc and in this case we'll we'll um, We'll just be supplying it with the radius, and that is because let's see, out, outer radius 300, and let's set the inner radius to 200. And that is because um, the start angle and the end angle will be provided by the uh, pi layout, and the pi layout layout looks like this: d3 dot layout dot pi. Simple enough. And um, we need to specify how it, this layout is to fetch our data. So since we have this, uh, we only have this really basic uh, data set up here. We'll just do this. We'll use the value accessor function and make it return uh, our data. Um, we also, yeah. So obviously we have to we have to bind our data to our document, and once again we select all. In this case, we'll select a everything that has the class uh, arc, and here's a. a piece of new, informa new information. So in this case we'll bind our data to that selection but we'll first pass the data to our pi layout. So we're binding our data to our selection but first uh, the data goes into this uh, pi layout. Uh, yeah I just repeated what I said once again but never mind and then we'll use the enter method and we'll append a group 
for each uh, data element and every group element has the class of arc okay so uh, the next step is to append a path to each because right now if we update this we have nothing on our page we have to append a path to each of these uh, returned objects so if we if we take a look at the inspector here and um, take a look at what the pi data actually contains we can see that we are returned with three different objects each of these these objects and this is the result of us passing uh, this data right here to this layout here this layout returns these three ob objects and as you can see each object has the data property and uh, the start angle and the end angle uh, but we need to we need to create a path um, out of those objects so the way we do that is simply we'll select our um, our group elements and we'll append a path to each and um, the data and uh, I mean the D attribute which we looked at uh, previously will fetch its uh, uh, path data from the arc uh, path generator up here and um, in doing this this uh, arc generator will be handed over will also get this uh, this data right here so the start angle and the end angle which uh, which we see right here so the the radius the inner and outer radius is provided here and then we pass on this data to the path generator down here so uh, yeah and also if we save it this now um, I think we should see something yeah okay so we have our our donut right here but it's hard to tell uh, the difference between the different arcs so we what we'd like to do is to give them different colors right okay so a good way to do that is to use a color scale which we've looked at before and we'll start in the variable color so if you remember um, color scales or scales uh, in general are created by writing d3.scale and in this case we'll use an ordinal scale which takes um, it basically means that the input is not quantitative it can consist of um, a number of names or anything that is not a continuous domain and uh, we actually don't have to specify specify a domain right here I won't go into the details of this since this is not the topic of this tutorial but uh, we can just specify a range and uh, let's say since we have three different uh, data elements we can specify three colors here so let's say red blue and orange and then we we supply this with a fill attribute and the fill will be a function no it won't be a function it will well actually yeah uh, so function D and will return uh, color D no actually oh yeah right so if we do this this will return the, the, the whole object with the different properties properties that we looked at um, so pi data uh, it will return to this whole object but we're we're only after 
the data right here, the data property. So we say that we return uh, d.data, since this is how we specify an individual property of an object. I know this is a lot of information, but yeah, that's life. Um, so let's try to save this and refresh. And we have this quite nice looking uh, donut chart. So let's just wrap this up with um, appending some text to it. So once again, we append to each group element. Since if we inspect here, we can see that each of these arcs are contained within a, a group element. So um, yeah, let's append to each group a text element. And we'll uh, we have to use the transform on each. So this is a bit complicated, but actually it's not that complicated, but it might look complicated. We want to return. Uh, let's see. Function d return translate and then we want to append a new method of the uh, arc path generator which which is centroid which basically returns the center of each arc and um, the center of the data each arc in our data and uh, this is a bit messy, but something like that. All this does is basically just put the labels um, at the right place. So we also want to get some actual text, and the text will be a f oh, the text will be a function, and we'll just return the data. So d data once again. Uh, let's take a look at this. Whoops. Yeah, so we have these uh, small labels here. We can style them a bit. If we want to, we can set the text anchor, which is a an attribute in uh, SVG, to the middle, and we can make the font size a bit larger so let's say 1.5 em and let's take a look at this again yeah so there we can we can read it mm, it's not the best color scale but yeah it's not the point of this tutorial but yeah that was a um a short um well not a short but a quick overview of creating um donut charts in uh, in D3 and actually to make this a pie chart all we have to do is obviously um, set the inner radius and the outer radius to the same let's save and refresh no let's see the inner oh no the inner radius must be zero so let's refresh and we have a, a pie chart yeah so that's it folks um, this is the first layout we we take a look at and we'll return to addition <coughs> sorry additional layouts in d3 in the future see you next time